Today we're going to use stuff we have laying around to make some wicked cool tags that we can use in our junk journals and altered books. Okay, so for this first step, what we want to do is we want to make um, some, put some colors down. So I'm going to use my fancy Blick acrylics for these ones. I just used uh, Michael's, but I want to get some different colors of paint. And what I'm going to do with this is use complementary colors. So these two are complementary colors, meaning they're kind of across the color wheel. And these two are um, complementary colors. So they're going to have a really big impact when they're put next to each other. And so what we want to do is we want to just, and this is just mixed media paper. I like to use a little bit better paper for this. And we're just going to smush some paint out. We don't need a ton. This is not, this doesn't take a lot of paint. And you're going to get it out here. Just a little glop. I have to say, one of the best things I've ever done is get one of those, this palette. And then I'm going to use clear gesso. So you can use clear gesso. You can use matte medium. You can, I wouldn't use collage medium. You could use Mod Podge. Anything you want to use something that will make this paint thinner, more, less opaque, less solid, and more translucent. Okay, and then I'm just going to get any paintbrush. Doesn't matter what it is. And I'm gonna mix this up. And I'm gonna put this down in stripes. And I'm gonna use all this paint up. And I don't want it to be perfectly, um, perfectly painted. You're not trying to make this perfect in any way. This is definitely the more you have little areas that aren't exact, the better off you'll be. But I do wanna make it in kind of like four sections. So this is gonna be my yellow section. And then I just have a little bowl of water over here. And now I'm going to go to this because this color mixed with yellow won't get messed up. And it even gives me some hints of that yellow in there, which is awesome. And as you can see, it, it's going to have lighter and darker areas. A little water, a little wipey, and then so red and then purple will go next, right? Because blue is in purple, so it won't hurt it. I might be getting down here where you can't see, but I'm putting purple on. I never fear. And I like where they overlap. I like where you can see that overlap of the colors. And then let's do our pink. And if you find, if you think this is going to be too dark, you have two things you can do. You can use a lot of the translucent, um, the medium to make it more translucent. Or if you felt like it was still too dark, you can go and grab your white paint. and just make areas where it isn't so dark. So this will mix with that. This will mix with that. Let's get this a little bit lighter. And you're just gonna, just gonna mix that into that paint. And one of the things about using that mat is that it's gonna extend the life of your paint color, meaning it's gonna leave it open longer so that you have more time to work because sometimes acrylic paint can can dry pretty fast but this will let it be open and let's see if we can get a little bit of that white as you can tell i don't worry about my colors mixing very much if if you are really really somebody who loves their colors to be just right you can make your colors just right right this is a project that should make you happy not make me happy but I like a little grunge in mine. I like that we're getting some mix of those colors. And I have, a, I have a ton of paintbrushes around that I can use to get some more blue back in here. 
There we go. Now there's more blue back in there. Perfect. Now is a fun part. We're going to use whatever stamps we have around. So this is not a, and it, it's been about 45 minutes. This is dry. That's the hardest part for me is waiting because these stamps would get ruined if I put acrylic paint on them. So I definitely can't wait. These are Tim Holtz uh, typewriter type blower stamps. And I am going to put them on my block. And there they are. So this is the first set. And I'm using Ranger Archi Archival Ink. And then just get them nice and inked up. And then go different ways. So I'll do each of these guys, this little set of fun letters and numbers two different ways so now i want to kind of overlap those two colors because i'll probably take part of that and i am just going to keep doing this so i'll speed this up so you don't have to watch all of it All right, I just finished up doing my letters. And for me, one of the best things is that they are all wonky and not perfect. For you, the best thing may be that they are um, lined up, perfectly done, and all that. So now, you wanna take some other stamp. So I have a whole bunch of different, um, these are Ranger, or excuse me, these are Stampers Anonymous. Um, Tim Holtz word stamps, just old fashioned words. And I'm gonna put this over top of these just here and there. So I want to make another layer of something. And you don't have to have these stamps. I'll put a link to them, but you don't have to have these stamps. You can have any stamps at all that you wanna use. It doesn't matter, and you're not really gonna notice them, so I can just flip this around, and I haven't used that part of this stamp yet, ever, so I know it's gonna be new. Now, I do like mine to go horizontal and vertical. I would never go diagonal. That'd be just too weird. Um, but you might like diagonal. You might, Oh, that made a really good one. I'm gonna put a couple more of those down. Why haven't I used that part yet? Okay. Now with all of this, the reason why you want to use archival ink is because it's permanent. So we're going to be doing stuff to this that if you were using a distress ink, it would um, maybe not work as well because it would blend if you're using it with, um, you know, some of the, the things that we're going to do later. And I want a combination of uh, like scripty words and then this is just um, I don't know I think it says curiosity this is just like typewriter script Oops, sorry about that and you don't have to cover everything you you can leave some areas I think I get a big open area this isn't this isn't cover every little bit of this this is get some good stuff behind there so you know that you have a nice look to your project. Okay, we're done with the stamps, so you can put those away. And then, I'm gonna rip this off. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna get your cutter. So I have a giant big shot, but I, um, this is for dies. I'm gonna use my sidekick because I think it is super easy to use and just sticks on my little media mat here real good. And what we wanna do is we wanna see how big our area is that we're gonna cut. So I want to put this cutting plate on here and then kind of cut it out just wide enough, cut, cut our strips wide enough so that they'll fit in that machine. Now we saw that there's gonna to be too much on this end, but I do want some of that white to show. And as you can see, 
This is not a precise, perfect method. And once you have one cut, you can kind of just go and do it. But I want one that is going to be the, the intersection of this, because that color is going to be beautiful. And that made this a cool intersection. And this a cool intersection. And then we're going to have those that just pink one. Okay. So, if you're bummed out because you don't have dyes to use, never fear, because this is the use the stuff you have around your house project, I promised you. I always have these funny edges on my papers. They bother me. And you can, if you want to make this one, woohoo, use your hole puncher. So I have a circle punch. I have a whole bunch of different size circle punches. So if I wanted to, I could kind of try to cool, find a cool place I like. I have the F in that one. So that's one we can do. Let's get this cool intersection here. Let's get a yellowish one. I'm gonna try to get that and. I may not be able to get it all, but maybe, oh, we can totally get that whole and. How awesome is that one? And, a pink one. Ooh, a T. T for Tara. All right, so I don't have to use fancy dies or anything like that. I can just use my hole punch. But I happen to have fancy dies, so I'm gonna get them. And these are fun ones. I'm using my um, system, my envelope system for dies, which worked out really well. I'll put a link to that so you can see it. But I like this one. And so all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your papers, you're gonna stick it die side down. I'm gonna cut it off so I know where it ends. I'm gonna pick two and then a little one. I'm gonna cover my mats and I'm gonna roll it up. Now you could try to find the perfect place. So if we look here, maybe we want more of that four and that W in there. Maybe we wanna to try to get the E more done. This one's upside down because the little hole is going to be there, but I actually like this color combination. Okay, but you don't need to worry about this too much. You want it to be um, like a nice color combination, but we're going to get two tries at this. So this is these two. And then when you do your dies, you're just going to pop them off. And then I have a beautiful, where's my beautiful? cap pin that I use to punch my circles out. So now we have those guys. But I want to have an even number of each one because I want the back to be pretty too. So we're gonna run this set of dies through again with a different color. So I'm gonna use this one because I think that's super pretty. I kind of like this end. I need this, and I want it to be right side up, right? Let's make the end. Nope, let's come over here and get this funny color combination. And this guy, we'll make a Q. And then this guy is just going to have to be the K. Because you can't overlap these dies, or they won't... They won't cut right. And this is why I love the sidekick because it takes two seconds to do this and I can have it on my tabletop. And it's so easy, a 12 year old boy can do it. My son likes when I ask him to cut things out. So now we have fronts and backs. And you want to know the coolest thing about my diet, like about my storage system now? Because it's so easy to use, I'm going to put this away right away. I mean, like, that's, that's, 
that's groundbreaking for me, putting things away. That's just crazy talk. All right, we're going to put this away, and we're going to move on to our next step. Okay, so now we have two of each, right? Now we want to stick them together because I want to have a pretty front and a pretty back. Otherwise, if I have that in my art journal, when it flips over, I have to do something else exciting. I mean... And this way, I have two chances for it to match. Because I'm not going to do this for each journal, right? I have a whole little um, stash of these now. And I'm using art glitter glue. That's what I like to use to stick stuff together. It works the best for me. You could use uh, collage medium. You could use... Mod Podge, you could use a glue stick. You can use, this is not an exciting stick it together kind of thing. These, the, you get enough glue per, the, per the, the size of the piece that it's gonna stick. Now, mine didn't line up perfectly and that doesn't matter to me. If it matters to you, then don't do ones with little tiny um, holes in them. You know, little tiny edges but do make sure you get around the top of that. Otherwise, when you go to do your next step, which is the grommets, that's an exciting step, uh, it will mess you up. Okay, I thought I had four circles, but I see right now I have two circles. So let's pick the ones we like the best. I like the T and the two. I thought we had another one, that's okay. I can always use circles. Now, I will try to make sure that these are right side up. So the T is right side up and the two is right side up-ish and put those together. So this is the one we did without the tags so it doesn't have the holes in it already. So for this, you can use any hole punch. I happen to have a crocodile that lets you make any size holes. Um, I'm gonna make the bigger hole but you could use anything you want. I have a normal hole puncher that I use, but you just wanna make a hole. And you don't have to worry too much about getting close to the edge, like these are super close to the edge. And because we're gonna put a grommet in it, it isn't gonna matter. All right. And this glue you keep in this little container by putting a, um, pin in it. Use your words, Tara. Okay, now I have a grommet issue, so I have a billion grommets. And grommets are these little holders. They're going to make a hole like this. And then there are backs to them. Like I have a whole bunch of backs that you could make um, where they would look cleaner, but I don't care. So I kind of pick the front and the back. So on this one, do we want the two or do we want the T? I'm a T, but that two is really cool. Kind of like the two, but I don't like that pink grommet with it. We're gonna have to do, use a plain grommet with it. And then I don't know how easy this is gonna be to show you. All you do is you stick the grommet onto, I think I have two grommets. I don't know that's ever happened. You stick the grommet onto the little holder in the crocodile and you put your tag on top where you want it. And if you put it up against the, the top, there's like a little hole thing there. And then, oh, I made it a T. And so then I have my grommet on there. And that is going to be cool. You can use a jump ring. You can use all kinds of stuff. But these guys are kind of little grommets. So I have all different size grommets. I have big grommets and little grommets. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to put the hole. I just, oh, I guess I could use the pink on this one. I use the pink on this one. I put this by the hole. Oh, and the pink grommet is on the yellow side, which is fine. And this one, I need a baby grommet. So we're going to wait a minute and do this one first. Because I am actually trying to get something done here today. Okay, I like the yellow side on this one. Remember, it's kind of upside down, right? So there's the yellow side, love that. And then on this, this crocodile, you can turn it, turn this thing 
to make it so that your tiny little grommets, you have this little baby grommet. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you this. This is, this is a pain in the rear. Okay, we are done with grommets. We are done with the crocodile. We are done with everything. You can put everything away. I'm not usually this neat, but um, I have been getting better as, and, and this is really cool. This is my grommet holder from my witch's potion bottle. It's where my grommets live. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to make this um, dimensional. So this is going to be shiny. So you could use shiny collage medium. You could use distress embossing powder. You could use regular embossing powder. I'm just terrible at that. I don't know. It's not my best thing. All right. I'm going to show you how to use the glossy accents on a nice big area and show you how easy it is to use, even on like this crooked edge. It's just gonna go over there and float around those points. You wanna go around the top here. And then you can just go back and fill in the areas. Now, if you have any bubbles, you wanna pop the bubbles. And if you have any empty spots, you have quite a while that you can go back in and fill those in. And I have had this glossy accent bottle for a while and it does amazing. I have not run out. I think this might be my first bottle of glossy accents. And I've done a lot of these tags. As you see here, you can go right around that edge and it'll just catch the edge of there and then you just fill it in. And then I live in Florida, so I have to let these set overnight. I am not going to be able to touch these today. Um, but the cool thing is once they're done, they're hard. They have almost like a resin finish on them and they are really easy to use. They aren't gonna get messed up in your junk journals or your planner or anywhere like that. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.